Hey guys, this lecture is for students who are looking for what they're going to be when they grow up. You guys are young, you got a lot of time to figure things out, but you're still searching for that answer so you have some type of path to set your life on. The question is, what do you want for your career? And students usually approach this in one of two ways. Which job pays the most? Which job will I enjoy the most? But there's more to consider, like how much time will it take to get to this job? What type of education will I need to be part of this job? How much time will this job take away from the rest of my life? Will I get to travel? Will I have to travel? So here's my challenge to you. I want you to research three possible occupations. Try and figure out something that you'd like to do and learn more about what that is. Compare them. They could be in the same field. Maybe they're in the field of construction and you're looking at plumbing and electrical and carpentry. Or they could be wildly different jobs like film director and engineer and firefighter, farmer, Fisherman, and I'm trying to think of other jobs that start with F. Your goal is to have something to compare, and the more you envision that, and the more you research it, the better a vision you'll have of that future self. Some people are really interested in becoming a veterinarian, but then they find out that to be a veterinarian, you have to have several years of extra education. If that doesn't work for you, you find a different career path. It could be something else in the field. You could be a vet tech. You could be working in sales. You could be working in marketing, administrative support, design, or you say, this is really important to me, and you make plans for how to fit that educational path into your life. Create a spreadsheet to compare your options and to record your research. This is just for you. You don't need to turn it in. You're going to go back and look at it later. You might develop it over the next several years, but this is important information and you want to have it for yourself. Compare at least three different occupations. You might find that you end up with just one job for the rest of your life, but more than likely you're going to have a career arc, something that changes. Maybe your job changes as it becomes a different type of job, or maybe you, you move on to a new job after you get tired of one job or more than likely you change and you need something different in your life and so you move on to several different types of jobs. Even if you stick with the same job for the rest of your life, that job is going to change as times change and you're going to either need to change with it or you're going to need to find a different occupation. Let's do some of that research now so you have an idea of where you're headed. For myself, I've had quite a few jobs. I've worked in at least 20 different jobs over the years. What I want you to do, I want you to identify and compare the following details. Pick a career choice, that's the general term for the job, the specialty, narrowing it down to something specific about that job, the responsibilities, what does a person in that job need to do, what skills are required for that job, what do you need to be able to do, what education is required, are they going to train you on the job or do you need to go to college, what kind of working hours, is it something that you only work four months of the year but you're working 14 hour days or is it something that you're working 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or is it something that you only work part time and you can't make a living paying your bills with it. And then finally, your annual earnings. It might say you make $35 an hour and you say, that's great, but then you only earn $35,000 a year and that's not enough to meet some of your expenses. It really depends on a combination of how many hours you're working and how much money you're being paid. For example, you wanna be a lumberjack or a, uh, we'll call it a logger. You wanna be out in the woods. You like the forest, you wanna cut down trees. Hmm. Narrow down your choice. What type of logger? Where do you want to work? What type of trees do you want to specialize in? Did you realize there are different types of loggers? What do you envision for yourself? Next is the job description. What would you be expected to do on a day-to-day -day basis? Would you be swing, 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 swinging an ax or operating machinery? Would you be inspecting trees or grading lumber? Then let's look at what skills you need. What is required to learn before you are able to do the job? Sometimes this overlaps with education. The required education is more of a formal requirement. What type of school or training would you need to have before you could get into this job? For some jobs, you need to spend nearly 10 years in school outside of high school in order to be able to start the job. In other jobs, you can get on the job training and start immediately. Let's talk about working hours. 
This is important. This shapes not only your lifestyle, but also your relationships. You might have a job with a lot of time off, but you're working really intensely for just a few months of the year. Are your hours consistently predictable from one week to the next? Some jobs don't have that predictability. You don't know exactly when you're going to be working. You might be changing that every week. You might be on the road instead of staying at home. You might be working 80 hours a week. Some jobs like logging have seasonal fluctuations. There's long hours each day, but when winter comes and it's too cold to go out and cut down the trees, then you're not going out and cutting down the trees. You might be out of work for a little while. On one hand, you're gonna have several months of time off. On the other hand, you might have several months with no income. Finally, look at annual income. Annual means yearly, what happens over the course of a year. And this means what you're going to be taking home once the year is over. This is where you balance out the intense earnings and the intense hours of some job that's seasonal. You might need to get better at budgeting if you have a portion of the year that doesn't have pay and other parts of the year that have a lot more pay. You need to be able to budget and plan for those times when you don't have as much money. Another thing to consider are that jobs are constantly changing. Looking at the future, you want to try to predict what jobs are going to be valuable in the future, what skills are going to be necessary for those jobs. If you were developing skills to be a VCR repairman in the 1980s, that would be a valuable job skill. But nobody's really repairing VCRs so much anymore. It's difficult to predict eight years in advance. For example, the truck driving industry is facing a lot of changes. We have electric cars, we have self-driving cars. This is going to impact the trucking industry. How it will, we're not sure exactly yet, but it's definitely going to change things for the industry and truck driving jobs will be affected. If you're still interested in truck driving, there is a lot of money to be made, but maybe you have to be more competitive. Maybe you have to have an extra level of skills, maybe an extra level of repair or computer programming or something to do with actually planning the routes of where things are delivered. Those are skills that will help you get a job in that industry if that's what you really want. I'm going to include a few links on extra details you can find about jobs. The Bureau of Labor Statistics is really valuable, but there's a few others. I hope you guys have fun on this exploration and find some good jobs that you might end up with in the future. They're exploring what kind of jobs they would like in the future. What kind of job would you like in the future? I know, teacher writer.